Okay, last but not least, we have Dr. Fajarudin Ahmad from Indonesia Institute of Science eh, to present uh, his research on banana wild relative diversity in Indonesia for sustainable banana production. Okay, welcome Dr. Fajarudin. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Yusmin. Uh, could you see the slides? Yes, we can. We can proceed. Okay, good morning from Indonesia. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my appreciation to the Committee of Malaysia National Banana Congress 2021 for the invitation and especially to Dr. Ardiana for his uh, personally contact me preceding this uh, Congress. And for everyone, thank you for your coming in my talk. Today, I'm going to give a talk about genetics and diversity of Indonesian banana. But beforehand, I would like to introduce a bit uh, about myself. And this is my institutions in Bogor. So Research Center for Biology is incorporated with Herbarium Bogorinse, and uh, it's situated about 45 kilometers in the southern part of Jakarta. But I think next year, my institution will be merged into a new institution as National Research and Innovation Agency. So uh, this year, I think it will be the last uh, of my institution, the Research Center for Biology. Okay, back to banana and Indonesia. Indonesia is the center of diversity of banana. Uh, here, here in this country, we can find the cultivar and its wild relative, uh, the Musa balbisiana and Musa acuminata. Perrier explained that the distribution of Musa balbisiana is mainly in South Asia to Southeast mainland Asia. Later, Volker believed that the distribution of this banana is much larger, including Southeast Asia islands, such as in Philippines, Indonesia, and up to part of Papua. Musa acuminata is more diverse than the Musa balbisiana, and it's distributed uh, more widely in Southeast Asia. Based on these distributions uh, and of both uh, banana, acuminata, and balbisiana, Indonesia is play a role for the evolution of uh, the banana, as the most wealth relative are present in this country. In Indonesia, Musa balbisiana is found across the country with some morphological variation from the green to light green and from the black pseudo stem to uh, green pseudo stem. And in Indonesia, this banana is known as pisang klutuk. Musa acuminata is other wild relative and its diversity is much more than the Musa balbisiana. And I think this, this species is the most important wild relative because almost all banana cultivar, edible banana, are related to this uh, species. The subspecies of this uh, species, Acuminata, is found across the country from uh, Sumatra to Papua with a lot of uh, variations. The bun shape, the color of milbud, the color of pseudosem, and so on. The other wild relative of Musa, also uh, found in, in Indonesia, such as Sisocarpa and Stectilis. Uh, these two banana is not as popular as Acuminata and Balbisiana as the wild relative of edible banana but few of uh, edible banana are reported containing uh, the genetic of these two banana. Other banana also found in Indonesia, such as uh, Musa lolodensis in the eastern part of Indonesia. And in the western part of Indonesia, we, we can find uh, Musa salakensis. And from Borneo, there, are, there is Musa burniensis. Cultivar are many more. I think Pisang Ambon, one of the most favorite uh, banana fruits in Indonesia, I think not only Indonesia, also in Malaysia and Southeast Asia, and we also found uh, Pisang Raja, Pisang Mas, uh, Pok Tanduk, and uh, Tetraploid Pisang Ustrali. And I think many more, hundreds of uh, cultivar in Indonesia. However, the understanding of the genetic diversity of this whole banana is still limited. Few information of its genetic, population genetic, disease interaction, or agronomical character is still few reported. Since banana cultivar is sterile, uh, we need to exploit its fertile with re wild relative uh, for, breed, for breeding or studying its genetic for further uh, genetic improvement. Paul Kert indicated that uh, all part of Indonesia is important uh, during the development of uh, banana cultivar from the wild relative, not only in the eastern part of Indonesia as proposed by Perrier in the earlier uh, research. At present day, many researchers are rely on the international collection for their genetic study. 
However, the number of accession, uh, especially for the wild relatives, is relatively small to the number of cultivar that deposited in the uh, international collection that might not represent the population in the center of the diversity and probably not sufficient for a comprehensive uh, genetic study. Hence, needs more exploration of wild relative with a better approach, more accessions and a re reasonable sampling. Uh, before I continue my uh, presentation, I would like to express my uh, appreciation to my uh, colleagues and also supervisor, Dr. Hugo Fulhead, that urged me to lead uh, exploration in Indonesia. I realized that the Indonesia is a big country uh, with a lot of islands, so studying all banana in Indonesia will need a significant effort. To initiate the study, we began with the exploration of wild Musa Akuminata on Sumatra, in the duration of March to July in 2017, we collected 164 accession of wild Musa Akuminata. We, co we collected the sample considered on the road side of the uh, main roads, and we considered to five to 10 kilometers. But we also include plants with different morphologies or characters when we notice the, 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 the samples. And from the explorations in Sumatra, we identified uh, five types of wild Musa Akuminata, such as subspecies Malaxensis, variety Longipetiolata, subspecies Halabanensis, subspecies Sumatra, and we also find a new record in uh, Aceh province. Halabanensis is easily to distinguish to other subspecies from its purple rounded millbuds. However, we also found a variation of the millbuds uh, in the nature from the rounded one to the more lanceolate shape. And another characteristic of this banana is it's a smooth rounded seed. Malakensis is common in Sumatra. It has a red like a top millbuds that can be noticed from the distance. And it can grow from the lowland to the mountainous land. Variety longipetiolata as described by Nasution in 91, uh, it's similar to Malakensis. It has a similarity to the fruit, fruit millbud and the pseudo stem, but except the length of the petiole, the, the length is as long as the lamina, so that's why it's named variety longi petiole. Subspecies uh, Sumatrana, this one is quite beautiful. It can be distinguished from uh, its hanging bunch with a lot of hands, up to 25 hands of banana, instead of 10 or seven hands uh, for other subspecies. And the seeds also is unique. The, the seed is flat and it has a round edge. And the last type that we found in Sumatra is the new record that we found in Aceh. Uh, this uh, accession, I, I didn't notice in any other part of Sumatra during my explorations. Uh, an interesting uh, character from this, sub, from this banana is that it has a, a bruff that not rolled up as the typically belong to Musa Akuminata, but it looks like a Musa Balbisiana. Besides of uh, that morphological character, we also found uh, three accession at least of subspecies Albanensis with a cracked fruit with that commonly found in Musa Six or Carpa. We have no idea whether this is, has a genetic uh, similarity between these two banana. I think uh, we need to do a further study for this. To get more understanding and the accession between uh, and the association between the morphological character and diversity in the grouping uh, of the subspecies of, or variety, we did a principal component analysis. And then we found that the grouping is in line with the uh, grouping of the subspecies and variety. So the, the yellow is the group of uh, Alabanensis, and then the red is the group of uh, Malakensis. And these three accession is the new records that separated to the, the other uh, group of banana. And the uh, purple one is group of Sumatra. And quite interesting that the Longipetiolata uh, is in the group of Malanx. It's not surprising because the lot of the similarity into the of the morphological character. Still from the same morphological character data set, we combine it with the GPS data for spatial multivariate analysis, PCNM. The dot size is proportionate to the eigenvalue that represent the differences of morphological character among accessions. Here we can notice that there is an indication uh, of substructural population uh, 
in subspecies Alabarensis and uh, Malakensis. We can notice the differences of the uh, circle. We only include these two subspecies because for the rest of subspecies, the number is not that sufficient for the analysis. And here uh, we did the genetic uh, analysis. We use four uh, chromosomal genes, catalysts, GBSS, ADH, and IDH. And the uh, color is uh, associated to the subspecies. So zero for halobanensis, pink for the malaxensis, red for the zebrina, and the purple for uh, Sumatrana. And from this in analysis, uh, the malaxensis indicated that it has a higher uh, genetic diversity to other uh, group of uh, subspecies. And the pattern for all, uh, for another loci, ADH, GPS, and IDH is similar. But the importance of this analyst, analysis is this one, to trace the origin of banana. So the usefulness of the network is we can indicate the origin of the banana. Here, I would like to show you uh, the example in, uh, in the case of pisang jari buaya. Pisang jari buaya is hybrid AA. So this is an infraspecific uh, hybrid from two or probably more uh, Musa Akuminata. So we need to trace at least two haplotypes. Here, I found one type to be regular uh, Musa Akuminata types in the Malaxensis. I indicated with a circle. And it's also, we found that there are a type of another subspecies, subspecies halabanensis. Uh, we found that the exact halabanensis haplotypes that we found this, uh, in, in this case is from certain part of Sumatra in Bengkulu province. So this is make a good case for that uh, pisang jari buaya is originated from South Sumatra or province of Bengkulu. And it can be an indication that the development of pisang jari buaya it can be from this area of Sumatra. An important message from our work is that we need to explore more wild relative of banana in the center of diversity to understand the genetic uh, of banana. The most important is a comprehensive exploration. Indonesia is a big country that consists of many islands that play a role in the evolution of banana cultivar. Our genetic study in Sumatra is an important step to understand the diversity and provide uh, the first step to another comprehensive study in other islands, such as Kalimantan, Java, Sulawesi, Halmahera, and also Papua is waiting for the such study. Another important action is screening to any important traits uh, that potentially useful for further banana improvement on feeding. Screening for fusarium yield can be performed in the near future, I think. Mariani in 2018, uh, he reported that he did exploration in Indonesia and collected about 200 isolates that resulted in 10 genetic lineages with still unknown the level of pathogenicity to the bananas. And recently, I reported that the resistance of Fusarium built uh, RIS1 and TR4 are associated to the region of chromosome 10 in subspecies uh, Malaxensis uh, accession from Sumatra. The such exploration for other resistance or trait is waiting for other banana or subspecies. Another further study is screening for potential parent that useful for breeding. Sterility is the problem in banana breeding that mostly caused by the structural rearrangement. Screening by, uh, screening by chromosome observation at diagenesis stage of pollen mother cell or pollen viability test can be a tool to assess the level of the sterility that may be useful to select potential breeding, uh, potential banana for breeding. So a genetic study of banana is the foundation of the genetic improvement toward the sustainability banana production. But we still need more genetic diversity. We still limited information of it. I think I'm in the end of my presentation, but before I finish my presentation, I would like to express to uh, knowledge to all my collaborators, uh, Dr. Hugo Volkert from uh, Kasesat University, uh, also Dr. Yu from uh, Research Center for Biology and uh, Professor Het Kema and Hans Leong from Wageningen University. And a great appreciation as well for all uh, sponsors. And also for uh, your attention. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Fajarudin, uh, for a very um, interesting exploration that you have there. Okay, so um, I guess we still have uh, a bit of time for Q and A. So, yes, any please. question from the audience? Is there any question? So there's one question, not, not really a question, just a confirmation uh, from me. Uh, recently in Malaysia, there is a viral of a banana tree, which is big as three-story building in Indonesia. So have you come across with that banana tree or? Yes, uh, that's, uh, that, is the, that is species Musa Ingens uh, from oh, Papua. Really? So in 2012, I went to Papua and I noticed from the distance, uh, this the great banana. So on the tall is up to probably 15 meters tall. So it's wow. really huge. That's really uh, interesting. Banana, yes. Yes, that is, that's really huge banana. Oh, it did really exists, yeah? Also, we have hands from uh, Prof. Yasmin. Ah, Prof. Yasmin. Yeah, nice. Yes, go ahead, Prof. Yasmin. Hi, Dr. Fajar. Very congratulations on your PhD, first thing. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Uh, Dr. Fajar is fresh yes. from uh, his uh, PhD studies and doing some very exciting work. Very excited to have you. Actually, I'm sorry that you are not in the session B, actually, because session B, you, uh, the, the, first, the first speaker was talking about the reclassification of the taxonomy of banana to beyond A and B, but I think you can have a discussion later on. I wanted to ask uh, from your very interesting expeditions, uh, how are you working with the breeders or how do you intend to work with the breeders to select the best material or are there already breeders in Indonesia that you're working with? Uh, thank you uh, for your question. This is, this is, it is quite interesting, uh, this question really in, in, for, for Indonesia as the center of the diversity. But unfortunately, there is not much breeder in Indonesia. Uh, as long as I know, so far only uh, one person, Dr. Agus uh, Sustanto from uh, Indonesian Fruit Tropical Institute in Solo, and also from my institution, Dr. Yu uh, Purba, uh, so far, and we still uh, did very few breeding activities. So mm -hmm. in my institution, uh, in Research Center for Biology, we did uh, breeding since 2019. And relatively new compared to the Ivan Institute that already did the breeding since more than 13 years, 30 years ago, I think. And the most important thing I think uh, at this moment is now how to deal with the breeders and how to deal, how to select the, the banana. I think the banana, we can, we can, we can set an experiment how to select as, as I did in, in the recent years. So we can, uh, uh, select, we can do this. We can do the selection from the cytogenetic sites. Uh, we assess the pollen. We assess the chromosome, and also the compatibility of uh, uh, wealth relative to the cultivated banana. But I think the most important we need at this moment. I need to make a good uh, approach to the yeah, policy yeah. makers because banana is not uh, uh, a big deal, a big deal actually, <laughs> because mostly it was cultivated by traditional. And farmer, they, they didn't found notice any uh, serious problem because once a banana collapsed by a disease and then they can change to another uh, cultivated banana because so many cultivars in Indonesia. And in the traditional markets, uh, we can many, many uh, found much more. And yeah, there is yeah. only one uh, banana company in Indonesia that realized uh, to the problem, to the fusarium, to the blood disease, to the fungus and everything. So we already make uh, have a collaborations to uh, Greek giants uh, uh, Nusantara Foods in Lampung since 2019. We 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 have a, uh, we maintain collections and then we also make a selections to the cultivar because they have a area that's already affected by bacterial disease or uh, fungus disease such as Sarium build and also yeah. pests. It's a very interesting uh, response because you brought the idea that, that this is one of the reasons why diversity works against us, right? Because yeah. we have so much diversity, we don't bother to breed, mm -hmm. we just keep selecting. Mm -hmm. Ivan, it's not a good problem. <laughs> I am sure Ivan would like to have this problem. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, diversity, yeah. but we don't have the strong breeding programs and the strong breeding programs are in countries actually where diversity is very low. Somehow or other, there, there has to be a kind of a meetup. Uh, Malaysia yes, has sure. the same problem as you actually. We, we don't 
really have very many active breeders and and uh, I, I think it's a, it's a serious problem actually. So maybe we should collaborate more and this see how to build this strength. Yeah? Yes. Okay, we have next question from Dr. Ivan. Oh no, Prof, Prof Yasmin has really exhausted what I wanted to Sorry. ask. Sorry. But still, I, 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 keep, I kept wondering how, how we have center of origin with so much diversity like Dr. Faridin has presented and the, the diversity is, is not being utilized. We don't have so much breeding in those centers of origin. But like I, I put it in my presentation, if you, if you looked at the introductions, the, 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 the diploids that we introduced, they are almost 20, they are not so many. Just when I look at what Faridin has just presented, he has more than enough. So my humble request is, is to initiate these collaborations between the, the, the programs in Asia so they can help us. You know, the East African Highland banana, the banana that I'm talking about has a very low genetic diversity. Almost each and every disease that comes, they are susceptible. So the diversity is very low and we are trying as much as possible like I have presented to see that we can create some some big genetic some big uh, genetic diversity. So your study is actually of more importance to me than maybe you. So <laughs> later with you with your results, you can share them. We can see how to move on. Thank you. It's a good Excellent. presentation. I hope you guys connect after this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think uh, there's no further question to. Um, Dr. Fajaruddin, uh, thanks again from me and uh, uh, thanks again for sharing with us your interesting finding. So uh, can we um, go back to Dr. Fatima because I, I see there's a question in the chat box uh, addressed to Dr. Fatima. Dr. Fatima, are you still here? Yeah. Yeah, so someone, uh, I think Dr. Shahid Shari asking about where did you obtain the seed because we have different variety of uh, Musa gracilis in Malaysia. Thank you. Uh, this one I obtained from uh, Lojong Highland, from Langgo Bisang in Kelantan. Yeah. And uh, I noticed uh, there are some as well uh, in Jiri area, especially uh, uh, in Highland. It's not, not really high, it's, uh, it's uh, on the bench uh, uh, location, so there are still uh, uh, in the places you can still can see this piece of water. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fatima. Is there any more question uh, from the audience? Uh, if not, I would uh, like again to thank all the speakers. Uh, for your presentation today and nice to hear the, the research that you have done and also thank you to all the audience uh, which participate in this session. Okay, so um, I think that's the end of our first session. Uh, I will pass back the session to uh, MC, uh, Mr. Kuhan, for uh, any uh, announcement for our next session this afternoon. Okay, thank you. Yeah.